Hi everyone on the internet. It's me, Caitlin Wingers, and we're back for another episode of Everyone a Reader. I am so, so excited about the guest we have on the show today. This is one of my most spectacular, magnificent, amazing friends, Kristen Bond will be um, on the show today talking about books and reading. Um, I met Kristen about two years ago. Uh, we were at a conference together. We were a part of a, the International Literacy Coaching Cohort, ILCC, um, and that is a program that was run through NISA, um, the Near East South Asia something of schools. <laughs> There's so many acronyms. Um, so anyway, we were at a conference. We met. We're together in this cohort. Um, and so we got to spend um, four in-person conferences and then one virtual conference in spring together. Um, and man, she is just one of the coolest people I've ever met in my life. Um, she just makes me want to be a better teacher, a better humor, human, uh, a deeper thinker about things. Um, I just can't say enough good things about the way she changes my thinking. Um, so I feel really, really fortunate to have met her, you know, just to be a part of this cohort together. We would have never met otherwise, so that was pretty lucky. Um, also, we just, I mean, we haven't spent a ton of time together, a couple weekends over the course of two years. But we know how to have fun. And if you don't believe me, check this out. Okay. <laughs> Do you show bloopers? <laughs> no, Kristen, I don't show bloopers. I put them right up in the front of the show to show how awesome we are. Um, <laughs> anyway, this is a great episode. Um, just talking about our love of reading. Uh, Kristen says something in the middle about habits. And she said how she really appreciates the word habit because it's something that you work on. And I've never thought very deeply about the meaning of the word habit. Um, so that really changed my thinking. Um, and she says a ton of other gems in here that I just love. So please enjoy, watch, love it. Um, and let's find out what makes Kristen a reader. for me and how late it is for you and so yeah. we're trying to pump up some energy yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> all right do you want to talk a little bit about reading and books yeah I do okay I really do good good yeah. good okay my first question is um what is your favorite children's book so that can be either a book from your own childhood or something that's been uh, published more recently um There is this one, and this is bad that I don't remember the name of it, but you used to find a gold bug on every page, and it was like the hunting of this little gold bug, and I just remember reading it incessantly, and there were no words in the book. It was yeah. just all pictures, but I loved it so much. And then The Secret Garden was my other one, that we had like a picture version, so I would, my mom would read the words to me, and I would look at pictures, but I read that book until the pages were like falling apart. Have you read that book recently? Or is that just like a childhood memory? Have you ever picked it back up as an adult? Um, I think I did pick it back up to buy it for my friend who had a kid. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember flipping through it. I just remember, you know that thing where you're like, I loved this book so much, so mm -hmm. this person will obviously love it so much too. Yeah. yeah I feel that's, like that's The Secret Garden specifically, I feel like I read that when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. But I have no idea what the plot was at all. <laughs> like, I, I should pick it back up. I just, you saying that reminded me. Like, maybe I should really revisit true. that. 
Anyway, okay, I obviously didn't comprehend it. Hmm. There's the movie too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. to watch the movie. Yeah, book's always better. Um, okay, what is your favorite genre to read, and why do you like that genre? Um, this is tough, because I kind of go on like a roller coaster of loving different genres. Um, right now, I'm big into nonfiction. Um, but I'd say the one I go back to the most is young adult fantasy fiction. And I think I go back to that because it's like my, um, escapist books, you know, like I do like the, this learning in the nonfiction, or I do these heavy fiction reads that make me sad or really feel things. And then I go back to the young adult fantasy fiction because it's fun and there's usually like clever twists and turns in it or I don't know, just cool elements that I don't even know how authors could think of them, mm -hmm. but they, you, you feel like they're real. I just, I'm fascinated how people come up with these things. So yeah. I'd say, yeah, young adult fantasy fiction. So that's probably your number one, but you just kind of, you go it's, on. I always path. go back to it. I just know. bought one today. I always go back to it. What did you buy? Um, it is the sequel, God, you put me on the spot, um, <laughs> the sequel to Children of Blood and Bone, I forget what it's, what it's called, the uh -huh. new one, Yeah, but it's a sequel to that, and it's, I loved the first one, so I'm expecting to also enjoy the second. Okay, I read my first, I think first official fantasy YA fiction, YA fantasy fiction this summer. And I like two days, I just powered through it. It was so, so good. Um, Which uh, Sky, I can't say it right. I, that's not how it's said. Scythe? Yeah, There's Scythe. no C, Scythe. Oh, good. That's more of a dystopian though. What's the difference? Wait, well, so like what? What cha what's different from fan isn't dystopian under fantasy or are they yeah so there's like sci-fi dystopian where it's typically things that are plausible and could happen like they're they're not right now but you could see in a future setting you're like oh yeah this could actually come to be real mm -hmm. it's almost creepy that way whereas the fantasy there's like magical elements that are not really that plausible but they write them so well you're like oh i wish it was <laughs> okay okay i just learned something thank you and that makes sense yeah fantasy okay um so in your opinion what makes a good reader that qualifier word good has me uh hung up a little bit you know mm -hmm. um because I think there's so many things that go into somebody being a reader. Uh, and I think that if I were to say that I'm a good reader, it's just that I think that the written word has value, you know? Mm. Like it's not that I read every day or it's not that I read a different genre every time I pick up a book, mm -hmm. but just that I know every time I pick up a book that I'm getting something from it, whether it be enjoyment or I'm learning a new word or I'm learning like a fact. Um, I just know that, yeah, that, that there's value in what I'm doing. Okay. So it sounds like it's not really about the skills. Like that word good doesn't mean the, the skills of reading. It's more yeah. the mindset around yeah. it. Yeah. It's not that I can like read a book in two days or like you just kind of drop that. I never <laughs> do that. That was like a, that, that was me explaining how addicted I was to that book for 48 hours. Um, yeah. And it's not that I, I, you know, could tell you what the book was about from start to finish at the end, because, you know, sometimes books are really difficult to read, mm -hmm. but it's just that I gain something from the experience when I do read. I think that that makes a good reader. I love that answer. That's really deep. Thank That's you. so deep. Okay. <laughs> Question number four. Um, what is a strong reading habit that you have or maybe something you want to work towards? Mm -hmm. I think um, 
I like the word habit because a habit insinuates that it's something that you do work at, right? So habits are not something that we just have innately. It's something that you have to put time into. And so um, a strong habit I have is that I do read, if not every day, then every second day. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's just something that I've done my entire life that I can remember. Mm -hmm. Um, I was born into a family of readers. And so I know that if I stop that, because I'm not going to say my entire life, because I have stopped at times. And it makes me really sad when I like, oh my God, I haven't read for five days. Um, and I'm like, what is, what is wrong? And then I just get back into that habit, but I, it's a conscious thing, right? It's not something where, um, it's not natural all the time. Mm-hmm. So I know that like consciously, um, I see it, I keep books everywhere mm-hmm. so that I see it. I'm like, oh yeah, I need to read for 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. So reading every day. And you say what supports that habit is just having books around, visible, Visible. keeping them in your space. Yeah. That's why I don't like um, electronic books. I like Kobo readers and stuff. Mm -hmm. I need the paper. Yeah. Because then when I see it, it reminds me just like anything. Yeah. Yeah. I told, I got my first Kindle this summer Mm -hmm. um, and I read a, my first book on it and I was like this thing's gonna change my life but it turned out it's just the book was really good because <laughs> then I went to go read my second book and I was like eh. Eh. The, the swiping I just I want to feel the pages it's worth getting those books shipped I don't know yeah. okay question number five are you ready yeah. okay this is a this is a good one okay, okay. imagine you've just finished like the most amazing book you've ever read in your life yeah. Like the best thing you've ever read. Okay. Do you see that? Do you feel it? Do you feel it in your bones? Yeah, I read a really good book uh, a few months ago. So yes. I can oh, perfect. Finish. Okay. So then what is the, like the next thing you do immediately after you finish? Um, honestly, I usually hug it. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh. Because I just I don't want it to like end, you know. <laughs> so that's the first thing. The first that's the embarrassing thing. <laughs> the less embarrassing thing is I like text all my friends that they have to read this book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just I want to share it. I want other people to also hug the book. Yeah. Do you have specific people that you always go to, or is it like based on the book? You know who would enjoy oh. it. Or is it just like you mass text everyone in your contact list, read this book? Yeah, well, I have quite a few English teacher friends. Mm-hmm. So I text all of them. And then, yeah, there are a few other choice people who um, are kind of picky. And so I might text them too. But yeah, no, there's a, there's a core group that I'm like, if you don't read this book, we will not be friends anymore. So <laughs> I remember like, oh, yeah. actually <laughs> the first time, no. It wasn't, it was in Bangkok when we were together um, for Nisa and we were just like becoming friends. And I remember we were sitting down for breakfast and you were like, I got to go back up to my room. I got to finish this book, but also I don't want to finish it because I feel like the characters are becoming my friends. And if I finish the book, we won't be friends anymore. (laughs) That's like burned into my mouth. That was like the first real, like, I don't know. What are those? I get really invested. (laughs) Yeah, man, you love books. Okay, last question. And this is a new one. You're the first guest on the show that I've ever asked this question to. It's a big Okay. Why do you read? Um, why do I read? You can take a minute. It's a big one. Yeah. Uh, that's a big question. <laughs> And I, I, yeah. Okay. Why, why do I read There's, I think there's so much that can, that goes into that, but I'd say if I was to bring it down to its essence, um, I read because I like to learn. And I know that as I read, I'm either going to learn like a new fact or it's going to help me with my writing or, um, yeah, or I'm going to be able to share something with, with someone else. Um, so that's the same reason why I listen to podcasts or I watch documentaries. Mm -hmm. I find reading is, is the same. I I read to learn. 
I love it. Great answer. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's all the questions I have. But uh, one last thing. If any of my millions, thousands, hundreds, hundreds of millions of thousands of um, viewers would want to contact you or follow up on anything you said, what's the best way? Where do we find you on the internet? Um, I'm found on Twitter the easiest mm -hmm. at read write more. Cool. At read, write yeah. More. I'll put it down. I'll put it right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> cool. Well, that's great. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for keeping me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we can sign off here and, um, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Bye. See ya.